Dante Harmon presents Sacred Steel Made Simple. I may sit down for this, but before I get to the tuning, if you all have the page that says Major Steels and uh, at the top, the, the cool thing about how technology is now, online you guys have so much free stuff out there. This website, musictheory.net, it will just, it shows you by example about scales. If you want to know about a major scale, and you never knew what a major scale was, go to the website. It will even play it for you. You will hear what it sounds like. It will give you the notes, and I'm going to explain all this that you're, you're looking at now, and how you guys can relate it to your guitar. Um, basically, um, major scale, if you look underneath the word major scale, it says the formula. Whole, W stands for whole, H stands for half. Okay? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, on the steel guitar, there's a trick to this, and I'm getting ready to show you. And I, I didn't really come up with this. It, it, I, it just, I just happened to kind of um, realize it when I was doing this or practicing last night, that we're actually following this pattern on the steel, simply because we are moving a whole step when we move two frets. We're moving a half step when we move one fret. So if you follow that formula, there's your major scale. Okay? Now, I passed out papers and I did that for a reason. I want you all to number one through eight on your paper. If you can do it across or you can do it up and down, just one, one through eight. For number one, if you want to write it above it or beside it, write the word major. Two, write the word minor. Number three, write the word minor. Number two and number three are minor. Number four, major. Number five, major. Number six, minor. Number seven, diminish. If you can write D-I-M or diminish, D-I-M-I-N-I-S-H. E-D, diminished. And I'm going to explain what these chords mean. And number eight, write major. Okay, now the reason I had you number is because it means something. The, the, the numbers mean something and the, the chords mean something. Okay, they're relative to the number. Now we know that eight means what? Y'all know? We say octopus, why do we call octopus the octopus? Because it has eight legs. So the OCT means what? Eight, all right? Now, if you notice in your, um, in the scale, one through eight, eight is the note. So if you look at your one note and your eight note, it's what? It's the same note, that's why we have what written beside it? Major. Y'all got me? Yeah. Okay, so your one note and your eight note is going to be the same because you're starting over again. But we first start with the major chord. Every, every chord, or what we call a triad, has, you know, three notes that it consists of, okay? Your majors consist of the one, the three, and the five. All right, so you can write, on your paper, you can write major and just write one, three, and five. All right, and I'm going to show you what this is. On, on your minor, beside the word minor, write one, a flat three, and a five. Diminish is a one, a flat third, and a flat fifth. The and that is a <laughs> raise. A flat fifth. Just right there. Yes. So it's one, three, and a raised, which looks like a number sign. 
but sharp. Be sharp to fit. And I'm going to explain what that means. All right, here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain the first part of, of what I had you guys write down. Um, and that was the formula for the major scale. Um, the formula that I gave you guys was major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminish. Everybody got that? One through seven? Okay, basically what this is, is if I was in the key of C, okay, and, and the letters on the, on the piano are kind of like a, the, the letters of the alphabet, but we only go to what? Do y'all know? G. G, right. That's the only letter we go to. So we go from A to G in music, okay? Now, if I was in the key of C, okay, C is the first note. So C would be what? One, okay? So numbering from C all the way to eight, which is the octave, which is the octave, which is going to be, the letters are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the eighth note would be what? C. Okay, so we end back on the note that we what? Started from, okay? Now, to have this make sense to you, if you want to write those notes down, you can. Just, just number, just by, right beside those numbers, number one, C, number two, D, and so forth, okay? When you get to G, you start lettering back over again, start at A. So it would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right? Now, here's where it makes sense. A, I'm sorry, C, which is the number one, is major. If I were playing a C chord, it would be a what kind of chord? Major chord. If I was going to play the D chord, it would be a what? Minor chord. The E chord was minor. F, major. Um, G, major. Uh, A, minor. And B, diminished. All right? That's the formula that you would play chords for the scale. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Now, I gave you guys a formula for each of the chords, okay? The major consists of the one, three, five. And, and here's what I mean by that before I play it. Remember I had you guys write down major five? So what notes do you think consist of C major chord? By what I gave you. C what? No. C E G. Because the major chord is the one, the what? The three and the five. You got me? Now, what you were saying, the C F and the G, you know what that is? That is what we call a suspended chord. Okay? We ain't covering that because that's that's one of those complicated chords. We stay in basic today. <laughs> but that's a suspended chord. But we're gonna cover just the basics, okay? Alright? And then the minor chord is going to be what? C, E flat, and then what? G, all right? If we were going to play a C diminished chord, let's say in this case, our, in this case, our, um, the D is a minor. So we have to know the, 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 the note scale in order to get the, the letters. But since we all don't, we'll just stick with C by using all the, you know, since we know the C scale, we just use the C as a basis. If I wanted to play a C minor chord, we said it would be C, uh, flatten the what? Flatten the third, which is what? E, so it would be E flat, and then the fifth is what? G, G, okay? Now, the diminished chord is what? The one, the one, flatten the three, and flatten the what? Five, so it would be what? C, E flat and, and G flat, okay? Um, and then the augmentative chord, which is not in the, the actual scale here, is what? The one third and sharp in the what? The fifth. So it'll be C, E, G sharp, okay? Because we raised the fifth. We raised the fifth, all right? The C major, um, well, yeah, I play the C major scale using this formula, okay? Okay, here's my triad. Here's my one, here's my three, here's my five. Okay, so that's my one. Here's my two. Because what am I doing to two? Flatten my what? 
E flat. Flat my E, which is the, the what? Your third. Your third. Okay. Then the next what? G what? Flat. Then my four is, is major, right? Five is what? Major, right? Six is what? Minor. Minor. And seventh is what? And eight is what? Okay, you hear the scale? so that you can build a um, solid foundation on what you're playing. Because sometimes when you're in church, you really don't know what you're playing. You just, you know, whoo, Lord. <laughs> it just sound good. A one and a two. <laughs> so it's important. It's important that you know what you're doing, because um, there will be times where you don't you don't know. You know you're asked to, asked upon to do something, and they may they may not talk in your language. You know um, we're gonna play in the key of C. You may know where C is. You say okay, I need you to go to the four in C. Okay, well what's the four in C? Well you have to know the, the major scale of C to know what the four note is and what degree you play that note. So the four in C is what? Is F. So you know they want you there, okay? That's the difference between, you know, um, I know it and I, I don't know it. <laughs> so it's good to know what you're doing. I want to go over this, this major scale thing. Now, um, on your guitars, you guys can play it if you want. Um, if you guys are tuned in, there's a pattern that you can use depending on how your um, guitar is tuned, and we'll get into the tunings in a second. But um, you all know that your, uh, according to the paper, it says whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay. Now, what that means is when you're playing in open, and when I say open, that's open. That's open E. When I say, you know, E or whatever your guitar is tuned to, you're in A, open A. You know, you just hit the note. You're in E. I'm in E, okay? <laughs> if you guys remember this formula, that whole represents two frets, half represents one fret, you'll be able to play a major scale, okay? Because here's a the, here's the major scale in E. formula. I'm going to start on my open string. If a hole is two frets, hole is, the next hole is two frets, half is one fret, hole is two frets, another hole is two frets, another hole is two frets, and then the half is one fret. You guys just play the major scale. CarterSeals.com, I, I kind of pull down, and you guys can go to this URL, you can print it. They got it out there. They got our tuning or some of our um, most common 10 string tunes. Now, if you guys notice there, we got a lot. We got what, two? We got two six strings here. And I'm, I'm going to have those guys show you the way they tune their guitars. But the, the cool thing about our tuning is that they are different and they are unique. If you look in Nashville, and I, I know Wade is a witness, most of the guys, the session players in Nashville, play using the E9 country style and the C6 swing, okay? Those are the only two tunings that are in Nashville. So if you were to go play a, a country session or if you were to even sit in a session with any of those guys, they got their guitar tuned one of two ways, either E9 or C6. So our tunings are basically totally outrageous. My guitar is tuned in E6, Kashai is tuned in E7, E major, yours is tuned in what, probably E major? Yeah. Hit it, hit the tuning for it. <laughs>
Yeah, that's the E7. Okay. Oh, that's the A string. Okay, that's the E7. Okay, so we got E major, E7, E7, mine is an E6. Hit yours. I want, I want them to hear this. Every string from the top. Okay, that's E9, you guys. Hit it again. That's an E9 tune. So in Nashville, those guys, any sit at that guitar and play fluently. Because that is the way that they, they set up their guitar. It's just a universal standard tuning. Now for us, What's universal and standard is E7. <laughs> E7, and we call it we call it the Calvin tuning. And go ahead and hit. Do you have it tuned up so they can hear it? Go ahead, hit, hit yours to try it. No, that's all right. Don't change it. I'm gonna show them something. Hit it again. Don't tune it, don't tune it. I'm show, show them something. Hit, hit that, hit your octaves or your, your E. No, the, the middle one, the one that's off. Yeah. Can, can you all hear that? Hit, hit both of them simultaneously. Can you hear, can you hear the little frequency there? The string is off by probably a, just it's slightly, it's, it's flattened just a little bit. Now go ahead and tune it up so you can hear it. It's, it's like it's straight now, but when it was out of tune, it was you can you can almost hear this you can almost see the sine waves. <laughs> you know you can hear it. <laughs> you can hear it. If you don't have a tuner, these things are very very cheap. I have a little cord CA20, and it probably cost me about ten fifteen dollars fifteen dollars twenty dollars. Very very easy to tune, and it's a chromatic tuner. You want to get a chromatic tuner. Now, there's certain things you need to know about these things before you tune your guitar, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay? Because yeah, yeah. we've had some situations here at church where, we, um, where we've come in and, you know, sometimes we've been out of tune, you know, point blank. And uh, whether it's the steel player, the guitar player, somebody was out of tune. And it's not because they didn't have their tuner, it's that they didn't really know how to really effectively use it. Um, I... If you notice on some of you guys, you have on there a frequency range. And sometimes it range, the range is between 338, 444, whatever. But mine is at 440, okay? And that's usually because um, most of your pianos and uh, middle C's at a 440, 440 hertz, okay? So that's standard, okay? So if you want to, in your, once you get your tuning, your tuner, you want to make sure it's set for you, because that's pretty much standard, wherever you go, okay? Now, when you are tuning your guitar, it is a difference when you tune your lead guitar than it is um, your, your steel guitar. Wait, do you, do you use a tuner? I do. But how do you do yours when you 440. tune it? 440. Now, when you do your strings, do you make sure they're straight up, straight up and down? Okay. Frankly, it doesn't always sound so good, you know? Right. I'm anxious to uh, what I'm missing. <laughs> no, it, it's, no, what you're saying is... It's like, it's, it's like three quarters of them sound good and a couple of them don't. Exactly. And there's nothing you do to get them to yeah. be right. right. So here's the conclusion that I've come to. Sometimes the most effective way to tune is by ear. And, and, here, and here's what I mean. If, you get a, if, if I'm tuning the key of E, okay, and that's my note. all my E's all across my fretboard, okay? And this is just my unique way of tuning. You may come up with a different way, but I sat in a session with Bobby Seymour, and Bobby Seymour, for you all don't know, is a country, he's a, he's a, he's a great, he's one of my favorite country steel guitars. He's, a, he's an awesome professional. But 
Bobby Seymour did a workshop on, on the steel guitar and he talked about the tuning. And he basically his guitar using his E's and his B's, okay, which is the, according to our scales, the one and the five, okay? So he would get his E's straight up and down on the tuner, okay? So according to your guitar, like it, it for, for some reason it caught an E straight up and down and you keep seeing it come up and you see the green light come on, that's because it's in tune, it's in E. So when you're in tune and your, 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 um, your meter is straight up and down on this, you're in tune, you're in key, okay? And what I do is I tune all my E's straight up and down. I tune all my B's straight up and down. Now, on the steel guitar, you guys cannot tune your G sharps or your thirds straight up and down. The reason being is because if you do, you're gonna be sharp, okay? On the lead guitar, you can get away with it because um, the frequency, well, because you're playing on the frets, you're, or where you're actually playing in the frets, we, on the steel, we are actually playing on the frets, okay? But the bar is a movable fretboard anyway. But you cannot tune your thirds or your G sharps straight up and down, okay? Because if you do, what's gonna happen is this. It sounds, this is actually in tune, but if I were to tune my G sharp, that's straight up and down according to this. And you all can see the green light on, okay? It's sharp. So when I hit my chord, you'll hear it. You hear it? It's a little off. It's a tad bit off. So I have to flatten it a little bit in order for it to be a tune. Remember this, even when you're using this, you can never tune your G-sharp straight up and down. You can't do it. Because mathematically, you will be too sharp on the steel. So these things are good, but you gotta, learn, you gotta know how to use them. <laughs> That's good. So you can tune your E's straight up and down, tune your B's straight up and down. Even on my guitar, in the, in the, e, in the E9 guitar, I have an F-sharp. I can tune that straight up and down. But my thirds, and even my six notes, I cannot tune straight up and down. But you tune the second straight up. I tune my second straight up and down. So it, it's, it's, re it's really weird. I never, and I never heard that phone before. I can't wait to go home with you. <laughs> it, it, it works. And, if you, and actually on here, there is, a, there is an in-between point on your tuner. It's um, like I have a negative 20 and a negative 50, and then a positive 20, positive 50. My G sharp has to be like a little below the negative 20 mark so for it to be perfectly in tune. So it's just slightly flat. Slightly on the flat. Third. Slightly flat on the third. So if you chromatically take it straight up and down, you will be too sharp. Okay? But that's for you guys who are using this. Now when I first started out, I didn't have a tuner. <laughs> I just used the ear. I asked yeah. the piano. Can you give me an E? Oh, hope the piano. Hope the piano, hope the piano player be close. So, you know, the old way was, you know, Give me an E. Or, okay, and I just, you know, tune my guitar according to that. It's good. It's a great way, actually, to start out doing because you really need to be accustomed to tuning by ear. So if you can have somebody give you a pitch, all up, okay? Always tune up. So um, if, if I had to give advice, even before you play, always make sure you're what? In tune. As far as left hand position. The way you hold your bar is, is, a, is really up to you, okay, what's comfortable for you. I've seen guys take the length of bar, and the length of this particular bar is so a little shorter, okay, than this one. The reason being is the amount of strings it covers, okay. This particular one covers and is designed for your 8 and 10 string model guitars. This one is designed for 6 string, okay. But the crazy thing about us sacred steel players is that we'll use this on a 12 string. <laughs> the reason being is because we're all over the guitar. <laughs>
and, and it feels good, it's light. It's light. Um, these heavier bars, or what I call these are your balls, they're, they're still there. This is what we, this is what the guys, um, Nashville standard. And the way you hold your bar is really up to you. Now on these, you really can't help but hold them a certain way on these particular ones because the grooves are built in your bar. So your middle finger goes on the left portion of the bar as such. Your top finger goes on the top of the bar, it rests on the top of the bar, and your thumb kind of grabs the side of the bar, okay? So it won't go anywhere. So you're just, you're there. Now some guys, like the Jewel Dominion players, our sister church, the guys hold their bars like this. They grab, they, they have the bar, yes, they have the bar in between their palms and they grab the top of the bar at, at, its, at, the, at, the, at the tummy, and they use a thumb, okay? And that's, show me, show me how that works. How that, okay. Sorry, I want you, uh, you want to do it? Come on, I can't hold it like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and they you, you use these three fingers to rest. by T1, 2, T being thumb, 1 being your first finger, 2 being your second finger, okay? Um, use all different combinations of T1, 2, okay? You got thumb, 1, you got 2, 1, thumb, you got 1, different combinations in the, the first finger your th is the D the D note is the actual seventh in E major okay um, so it sounds like this D I'm sorry E which is your one D is the seventh and B is your fifth and that gives us that what we call the Calvin tuning or the E seventh tuning okay and that's really where all of our picking comes from. When I pick my top string, it's usually I really want it to be forceful. When I do my middle string, it's not so, and I use a lighter gauge for my um, my my first finger. Use 25. Use the harder ones. You use the more the if if you guys don't know, your picks can be bought like your strings and gauges. Okay, because if you, if you turn your pick up upside down, you'll notice a number. Okay, and my... Hmm? <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, man. I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, it feels good. <laughs> the reason those numbers... <laughs> but, but the reason those numbers are there is because it gives the weight. Some guys like heavier picks, some guys like lighter picks has to be used as a technique or your chords will ring, okay? When you guys are playing on your six strings, when y'all when, when saw Henry, I don't know if y'all ever experienced Henry Nelson playing. Henry, Henry, Nelson, Henry Nelson was unique because he, he brought a drumming style to his playing. He would literally pick his hand up and just do all kinds of things. But he was probably, probably the best blocker that I know. Because when he would play, <laughs> so in, in that method, he used blocks. 
Because every time he strung, he was blocking. And see, I was playing drums then with him, and I just sit there and watch his right hand like, okay, Henry, what are you doing? <laughs> he was moving so fast until he really couldn't see what he was doing, but he was really blocking. And I look at old tapes of him playing, and he was literally blocking. And when he would um, play his strings, he would, he was the, you want to see a person that knew how to slur a note? Henry Nelson. Okay.
it's easy to do the, those, these types of hymns when you're in the open. If you're not in the open, I'm going to show you how to play it when you're not in the open, okay? When you're in the open, they're singing the eight charge, be happy, because it's easy, all right? So when they're singing it, the best way to figure your way through it is to play the melody yourself, okay? What I'm doing is, I'm holding the fit in the bass and playing the one. I'm going back and forth from the minor six to major three, back to a minor six. Tay Harmon presents Sacred Steel Made Simple. 